Hi, my name is Shaiju and welcome to Mentorship Matters. Today I want to talk to you about approaching your mentor. Now, if it is a paid mentorship or a coaching that is pre-planned and has already a strategy, I think it will be relatively easy to approach that person because everything is well defined for you already. But if you are in a church context, it becomes more complicated. Maybe those people that you really want help from are not even aware of mentorship. After being in the church for quite some time, I would highly recommend that before you approach somebody, that you would go to your pastor or your leader and tell them, hey, this is my desire. I see this individual. I see that they have a successful marriage. And I see a certain strength that I would like to learn from. And ask your leader if that is a good idea. Because sometimes from a distance, um, everything looks good, but when you get into a mentorship relationship, you realize that some people are very good at living, but are terrible at teaching. So I have seen many people that have great intentions, but when a relationship was formed and there was a mentorship assignment, they've not been able to deliver that expectation because they were not trained to be a mentor or trained to be teacher. In those scenarios, I would say, before you rush to get into a formal mentor-mentee relationship with that older brother or your older sister in the church, how about starting a friendship with that individual and say, hey, I'd like to take you out for a coffee. I would like to spend some time with you. Go out with them and let them know why you appreciate them so much and what you admire in them and what you see as something that is missing in your life and begin a relationship, begin a friendship. Get to know that individual before you get into a formal agreement. Hey, can you be my mentor? I'd like to be your mentee. And then finding yourself in a predicament that you can't remove yourself out of, start by developing a friendship. Now, that case may not work with everybody, especially if it is somebody that is hard pressed for time they may not necessarily be looking for a friend. So when you get into a place when you know that this person's time is limited and if you're trying to push for friendship and you are not in that place where you can be friends with, you're going to notice that they're going to find that awkward and you're going to even lose that relationship. So in those scenarios, you need to have the humility to go up to them and say, listen, I admire what God is doing through your life. I see these are your strengths and I see these are my weakness and I need your help to become what God wants me to become. And would you please mentor me? And that one line would be the most powerful lines that you can say because that is the beginning of growth in your life. But I have noticed many people are extremely vague of why they want a mentor. And if the mentor that you look for is a serious one and is somebody that already has assignments, so they're looking for somebody that has already started having some kind of momentum. They already know this is the area that I need help with. This is precisely, I'm not going to be a burden to you. I'm not in the nursery, but I need this extra push. And that is something that you can help the mentor by being very clear about where you have failed. If you're going to try to impress your mentor, you will likely lose the mentor because you are there not to impress him. You are there to be vulnerably transparent to him so that God may cause him to have favor in his heart, to see how you have succeeded in your own ways, but yet you are humble enough to open up and say, I need that extra strength that you carry. So begin by locating the difference in your mentor and begin by appreciating that difference. That itself is a huge plus point for somebody that is a serious mentor. Now I would like it to be obvious, but apparently it is not, that many times people forget that how you enter into a place of help is with great honor. And the Bible says, honor the Lord with your substance.
That means honor is not without substance. So if you are approaching your mentor and you're serious about receiving the help, first thing you need to do is you prepare something that is valuable, that you can present it to your mentor and say, listen, unlike the world that charges for a coaching, here's a brother, here's a sister, here's a man of God, a woman of God that you're approaching that necessarily does not have a cost to his mentorship. And he, and you are hoping that God would cause him to have favor in their hearts towards you and you walk in empty handed would be a terrible idea. So prepare yourself well knowing God, use my gift to move their hearts. Now I believe that if this is ordained by the Lord, it will come to pass, but sometimes a mentor, in order for them to know that this mentee is a serious mentee, may try to leave you alone for a bit to see how desperate and how intentional and how focused you are for what you say that you really want. Now this man or woman of God already has a life, already has sons and daughters. I'm hoping that you are looking at a successful mentor. And if he's already established by the Lord, why must he drop everything and pay attention to you? So to expect him to even drop everything and pick you up is pride in itself. So the way you can show this mentor that you are serious about being his mentee is that you are consistent and persistent and you're willing to wait as long as it takes for this mentor to locate you. And a mentor is always drawn to a serious student, especially a humble one. So I pray that this journey that you will begin will be a great blessing to you. But always remember, keep your expectations intact. As you begin this journey of mentorship, remember, he may not mentor you the way you want it. He is the mentor. So learn his ways. Leave your comments below. Let me know what you're thinking. Let me know what you want me to cover. I'll be happy to help. Until next time, God bless.